are less than a minute from kickoff in Louisville, Kentucky on a sunny but chilly championship Saturday. So much at stake across the college football landscape today. And here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, one of the most important games ever played here as the Louisville Cardinals play host to the Yukon Huskies. Our coverage presented by Cars.com. Sean McDonough along with Chris Spielman joined in a moment by Aaron Andrews. Louisville begins this championship Saturday tied with Rutgers for the lead in the Big East Conference. A Cardinal win today assures them of at least a share of the Big East Conference championship, but they're looking for much more than that today. Louisville needs to win today and needs a Rutgers loss tonight at West Virginia to give the Cards the automatic bid into a BCS bowl game since Rutgers owns the tiebreaker by virtue of its win earlier this year over Louisville. And Chris, it's a likely scenario what Louisville needs today. They're a big favorite here, and Rutgers, the underdog tonight in Morgantown. Well, the biggest thing they have to watch out for, Sean, is distractions. It's senior day. Everybody's excited, and it would make UConn season to knock off the Cardinals. Louisville won the toss and elected to receive, and Craig McDomino's kickoff for Connecticut goes out of bounds. Kickoff out of bounds, untouched by the receiving team. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Yeah, they don't need any help with field position. Believe me, this is a powerful offense. Connecticut shaky in many facets of the kicking game and off to a shaky start. Nothing shaky about Louisville's impact players. Brian Brom outstanding the last two weeks against South Florida and Pittsburgh. Has not been sacked in either one of those games. That's been a key. And Malik Jackson, their big playmaker on defense. 14 tackles for a loss. And a team high eight sacks. For Louisville defense that leads the nation in sacks. Brian Brom, the junior, from right here in Louisville, wanted to come out throwing. Now takes it down and runs, and runs well. Into Connecticut territory and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Run out by Ryan Hennigan. It's a gain of 20 for Brom, not known for his speed, but demonstrated plenty there. And he knows his vision right there. Nothing downfield to be able to tuck the ball and run. And here's where he's got Smarters heading for the sidelines. But Hennigan takes a shot when he can get a shot. Longest run of the season for Brom. 6'4", 225 pounds. And a handoff to Colby Smith. And he gets five to the 40. Let's give you the rest of the Louisville offense. Brought to you by Nivea for men. They're second in the nation in total offense behind only Hawaii. And the big playmakers are on the outside. Mario Uridia and Harry Douglas, each with a chance to have a 1,000-yard season. Possible they could both get there today. That would be a first in Louisville history should it happen. They've never had two 1,000-yard receivers in the same year. Brom looks to run again. And he's near a first down at the 35-yard line. Five more for Brom. For Connecticut defensively, last couple of years, one of the best in the nation. Not so this year against a tougher schedule. And the challenge will be in the secondary where they are experienced against this terrific Louisville passing game. The owners, particularly on Darius Butler and Tyvon Branch, to hold up. And Butler might have an interesting day. He is the backup quarterback. Depleted at that position are the Huskies due to injury. Butler could see action if their starter, Matt Monoslowski, goes down. On third down and short, the handoff to Anthony Allen, a part of their running back by committee. He's a short yardage specialist, but he didn't get there. Yeah, he's got 10 touchdowns on a year. He knows how to pound it in. He was able to just to sneak by the first down in Connecticut, where they suffer on defense, Sean. 104th in the country in stopping the run. I look for Louisville to exploit the run, keep the game safe, then go ahead and hit the play action like they did the first two pass attempts where they try to get one over the top. We did give them the forward progress to the 34 and a first down. What's up? Louisville on the move, two minutes into the ball game. Colby Smith, the tailback. Now he's their leading rusher, but you'll see a lot of different backs. They had eight different ball carriers last week in their win at Pitt. Darius Butler up from his secondary spot to chop down Smith at the 26-yard line. Colby Smith, one of 15 seniors playing in their final home game here today, and as usual, the emotional on-the-field ceremony for the seniors. Cousin of Mike Brown of the Bears. 
from Tallahassee, Florida. And he said the win that Louisville had in 2002 on national TV over Florida State really opened his eyes to this Louisville program. He said he enjoyed it. He was not an FSU fan growing up in Tallahassee, surrounded by Seminole fans. George Stripling took over for Smith and got the first down to the 19-yard line. Well, again, Louisville's coming out and taking the physical punch right to UConn's defense, knowing that their weakness is stopping the run, and I'm looking at UConn, and the one thing I would do if I were making an adjustment right now, they have a seven-man front. They're playing two safeties deep. When you do that, you do not have an on-block player, and Louisville's offense is doing a great job of sustaining blocks throughout the whole play. They're not coming off the guys. Struggles against the run. They have been good against the pass. Connecticut with a veteran secondary. Their four starters, a combined 85 career start. They stick with the run with Stripling. He got walloped. But a quality game down near the 13-yard line where Lindsey Witt and a true freshman defensive end belted him. Bobby Petrino with all running plays. They have called a couple of passes, but Brom took it down and ran with it on two occasions. So seven rushes and no passes. Usually they're very balanced. Yeah, you look at him. And he has his brother, Paul Petrino, the offensive coordinator, up in the booth with him. They give him about three plays, and Bobby makes the final decision, but there's no need to throw it unless you have to throw it. Brock Bolden, who doubles as a fullback, was the lone back. Nice juggling catch made at the seven-yard line by the tight end, Gary Barnage. He's their third leading receiver. That's his 25th catch of the year, the junior from Middleburg, Florida. It's a nice little option route. I like the throw and a great one-handed catch by Barnage, but the throw was delivered before Barnage came out of his cut. And you can see an experienced veteran football team and a team that's comfortable with its quarterback, knowing that the ball is going to be there as soon as they make the turn out of the cut. Brock Bolden remains the lone back. Trying to get outside to the left, got back to the line and perhaps just a bit more before Tyvon Branch took him down inbounds. It'll be second down and goal. Louisville 10 and 1. The one loss at Rutgers. And they blew a second half lead in New Jersey. That's the only thing standing between them, Chris, and right now being number two in those BCS rankings and thinking about with a win today playing for a national championship. Man, you know, they are so balanced and talented, and the one thing this Louisville team has maybe over the, the middle of the road Big East teams is tremendous depth. You can see that at their running back position. Good fake by Brahmi as a man wide open. It's Harry Douglas who didn't get into the end zone, and the ball came out. The Huskies say we have it. The officials appear to be marking Douglas down just shy of the goal line. Looked like M.J. Estep, a senior playing in his last game in that Connecticut secondary, might have popped the ball out. Take a look. You be the judge. Harry Douglas, known to be a great run-after catch guy right here. He's got to secure the football. He tries to sneak it out. That's a fumble. That ball's out. 11th play of the drive, and it's a touchdown for Anthony Allen. Allen, a true freshman. And that's his role in this running back by committee situation. He's now had a rushing touchdown in seven of the last eight games. And a total of 11 for the year. That's their 32nd rushing touchdown of the season. They're fifth in the country in that category. Art Carmody, one of the best kickers in the country. Adds the extra point. An impressive opening drive. Louisville with title aspirations leads 7-0. This game being broadcast in high definition on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma Displays. Impressive opening drive for Louisville. 11 plays. Took 518 off the clock. They had five different ball carriers. And two different receivers participate on that drive. Nine rushing plays out of the 11. They go 65 yards. Todd Flannery kicks off. Andre Dixon for Connecticut. Flags down. Three flags thrown all in the same spot. There was some very obvious blocking infraction, apparently. And 
They were thrown at the feet of Dane Mattingly. He made the tackle, rather. Yeah, Donald Thomas is down because there were some wedge busters. I mean, busting wedges coming full speed, delivering some cardinal Turn beaks on them. Illegal block in the back by the receiving team, number 50. Penalty is half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. Donald Thomas, the injured player. During the TV timeout, Randy Edsel, the Connecticut coach on the field, arguing with the officials about this play, was certainly close to be a fumble. We looked at it a couple of times during the break. It did not appear to be a fumble. It looked like the ball came out after Douglas was down. I think Randy Edsel, at the very least, wanted a replay review. It's close. You should review it. They elected not to. Of course, he could have challenged it as well. Impact players for Connecticut in recent weeks. Donald Brown has become the impact player on offense. Redshirt freshman running back. Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey, averaging 138 per game over the last four. And their leading player on the defense, Danny Lansana. That certainly helps with the loss of their starting quarterback, E.J. Hernandez, and you're able to run the ball to take some pressure off Bonislawski. Matt Bonislawski, 50-year senior in his last game for Connecticut. Randy Edsel said he manages the game well but needs to be more accurate. As you can see, just a 47% completion percentage. He was not the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year. D.J. Hernandez was. But Hernandez ineffective early on to give Bonislawski an opportunity, and now he's injured. Hernandez out with a wrist injury. Donald Brown gets the carry on first down, and Nate Harris made the tackle. Anivia four men starting lineups for Connecticut. Their strength is running the football, 16th in the country in rushing. They'll also need to make some plays outside. And they have two true freshman wide receivers in Terrence Jeffers and Brad Kanyu. who have both improved dramatically, according to Coach Edsel, as the season has gone on. Kanyu coming off the best game of his career last week in a loss at home to Cincinnati. Bonislawski threw it up for grabs, and it was almost intercepted by Brandon Sharp. Louisville defensively giving up just 16 and a half points per game 20th in the country coordinated by Mike Cassidy and a couple of great stories up front Zach Anderson back from knee problems to be a force in the last couple of weeks and Amobi Okoye playing in his final game as a senior he is 19 years old and a team captain but there's Amobi and a very highly regarded NFL prospect Third down for UConn, and Brown won't get to the first down marker. Stopped shy of the 15-yard line. He needed the 16. McCoy in on the stop with Zach Anderson. And Connecticut will punt. There were high school playoff games in this stadium the last couple of days, and we visited with Okoye yesterday. He said his teammates at Louisville were teasing him that he should be out on this field playing in the high school playoff games. And here he is 19 years old, when some are still in high school, but he's going to graduate from college later this month in three and a half years. Yeah, one of the big improvements has been a loss of weight. He told us yesterday he's weighing about 290, and that's his proof his get off of getting on the ball. Nice punt by Chris Pavaceras. Jawan Spillman can't get it. The Huskies have it and have it in the end zone. Terry Baltimore scooped it up and ran it in after Jawan Spillman had all kinds of problems. Robert McLean down there to put the hit on. And Connecticut, which is going to need a couple of breaks if they're going to be competitive here today, gets a huge one. On the fumble by Spillman, the strip by McLean, and the touchdown by Baltimore. And Baltimore did a good job of scooping and scoring. Not worried about just falling, but needing a big play. Connecticut recovered the kick at the eight-yard line. 
First down. The play is under review. It was a 78 yard punt. Really very little breeze in the stadium here today. It was a windy day. This part of the country affected by the weather that hit a lot of the United States over the last couple of days. Now I wonder what the review is it a muffed punt because no, he mean, picked it up and ran yeah, it and then got, fumbled. This is not a muff. This should be a touchdown. Yeah, there's a, he secured the football and was able to turn his shoulders around where he took the hit. Didn't let the ball go. Dennis Hannigan is the referee leading this Big East officiating crew. A spot the ball at the eight yard line. I don't blame Spielman for trying to pick the ball up and run, but this is a great hustle play. To knock the ball out and Baltimore also hustling on his play to scoop and score. McLean was down there playing from his hawk position or gunner position and going down and making a huge play for his team and for Connecticut to be in this ball game. Those are the type of plays, Sean, we were talking off the air that they need to do just to keep Louisville off balance. Louisville not great in the turnover margin. They enter this game just plus two for the year. They were plus three last week in their win at Pittsburgh. So they were minus in the turnover margin heading into last week. Bob Welch in the booth. To review, the call on the field is confirmed. First down. Checking with the booth to see why that was not a touchdown because the ball was clearly secured and the runner was running the football. Fumbled it. UConn picked it up and scored, and the booth will give us an answer. Well, instead of a touchdown, it's first and goal for Connecticut. Bonislawski, the quarterback, deafening noise from the sellout crowd here. Well, there are a few no-shows on this very chilly afternoon. Temperature not expected to get out of the high 30s. Donald Brown, the ball carrier. Zach Anderson chopped them down. There is a flag on the play. Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 46 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. The tight end, Dan Murray. Veteran, guilty of the early movement. And yeah, that's a rarity for Connecticut. They're the least penalized team in the Big East based on yardage per game. The first and goal back at the 13, more than midway through the first quarter. Louisville leading 7 0. It looked like Connecticut had tied it. Donald Brown turned the corner but didn't get very far once he did. Zach Anderson again. Zach Anderson. Well, the replay official deemed that that was a muff, not control of the ball and then a fumble. Then they're watching a different ball game than I'm watching because clearly Juwan Spielman picked the ball up, was able to turn his feet and start taking the ball up the field. When McLean made the hit, Baltimore came in and scooped and scored. Well, that kind of a year for Connecticut. Battled injuries. They've lost some close ball games. They haven't had much go their way. They need a lot to go their way. And the ball ruled out of bounds at the four-yard line after the catch by Brandon Young. Seven-yard gain. It'll be third down and goal from the four. Randy Edsel says we're down 17 bodies from what we should have here today. 11 injuries. And he said six players, in his words, dismissed themselves. We have rules and regulations. They violated the rules. They knew if they did so, they would be dismissed. That happened earlier in the year. But they are down bodies. They don't even have the full complement on their travel roster. Brought only 58 players here today, only one healthy quarterback. Third down and goal. Bonislawski under duress. Now has time and flips to the end zone and is incomplete. 
Intended for Brandon Young and broken up by William Gay, one of the best cornerbacks in the Big East. Now, William Gay did a nice job of not interfering yet. Having the ability to come over top of Brandon Young and knocking the ball out of here. You see Bonasowski right here is kind of throwing him a nice little softball. If he would have fired that in there a little bit low, then Gay would have had to go through him to get the ball out as opposed to going over the top. It was great timing, though, by William Gay. They've had a lot of problems in the field goal area. UConn as a team this season, just six out of 14. They've used three different field goal kickers. This is Tony Cherovino. And it is good. Just the second field goal attempt of his career. He's now two for two. He made a 29-yarder against West Virginia. 7-3 Louisville. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com. Find the right car for you. Cars.com. And in part by Bergwood.net, the ultimate college football fan site. And Papa John's. Order pizza online 24 hours a day at PapaJohns.com. Look at the Louisville Slugger Museum and Factory, the official bat of Major League Baseball, not far from Papa John's. Cardinal Stadium, the outskirts of Louisville. Of the More than 1,500 bats a day there. So Connecticut on the board after the field goal. And Craig McDomino will kick off. His first kickoff went out of bounds. Jawan Spillman, who had the problem with the punt a moment ago, back deep with Trent Guy. Guy's a dangerous return man. He brought a punt back for a score and then went over West Virginia. That was a big play in that game. And Guy gets to the 23. Here's Aaron Andrews. Well, Sean, obviously you and Chris mentioned a very emotional day here. Bobby Petrino's first recruiting class, 15 of those seniors playing their last game today. Now, one of the players that got maybe the biggest applause and cheers for one more year was, of course, Michael Bush, who broke his leg in the very first game. Obviously been standing on the sidelines ever since his injury. Now, Bobby Petrino telling me before the game he will have Bush speak with NFL GMs this coming week to find out where he stands with everything. But guys, you heard it. He is still swimming right now, not running, still walking with a noticeable limp. So it'll be very interesting to see if he applies for that medical red shirt or stays or leaves. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you, Aaron. There is an injured player. Deontay Taylor being tended to by the Louisville medical staff. And with Michael Bush, he certainly before the injury has first round talent, obviously with his size and his speed. But if he's limping around and the combine's about a month and a half away, he can't run. That's certainly not going to help his draft status, and people are going to wonder. And that's just the way it is. It's unfortunate for him, but uh, could be a good thing for for Michael to come back his fifth year medical red shirt and go ahead and, and play here at Louisville. He's a great player. In the unfortunate circumstances, but a real circumstance when you're injured. Amazing. They've been prolific offensively as they have been without a Heisman Trophy candidate entering the season in Michael Bush. But while we have a moment, let's go back and revisit the punt play. And our read of it was accurate in that we thought he fielded the punt, had possession of it, and then fumbled. In the opinion of the officials, he never had possession of it because it was a kick ball, even though it hit the ground. They thought it was a muff, and the replay booth agreed with them that the return man, Juwan Spillman, never had possession of the ball. Therefore, it's a muff, not a fumble, and it cannot be advanced. Had it been deemed to have been possession by Spillman and then a fumble, they could have advanced it and scored the touchdown. So we would just disagree with the replay booth and with the officials on the field we we thought he had possession of the ball he had, to me he had possession he was switching the ball from his right hand to his left hand and is able to turn the corner and they saw it a different way than we just saw it and that's, that's that's the replay system first once it goes to replay it has to be conclusive to overturn the call on the field and they deemed it a muff originally replay didn't feel like they had enough to flip it over so it's a big call it's a four point call at the moment and it'll remain a four point call Gary Barnage the receiver for a five yard gain on first down Sean you mentioned the Louisville's ability to maintain its juggernaut of offense it's because 
Brian Brom spreads the ball around when Hunter Cantwell came in. He did a good job, but they use a host of talented players, and he spreads the ball all over the field. Brock Molin out near the 30-yard line. They'll bring up third down at about three. MJ Eastep made the tackle. And Brian Brom missed two games with a thumb injury. And Hunter Cantwell filled in admirably. He's not missed on a pass today, and he was a key factor in their opening drive with his feet. He's talking to Brian Brown. You get a sense of confidence and calm when you sit down one on one with the young man. Really has a comfort level with the whole scheme of the offense. And he wasn't comfortable with that play. <laughs> so he'd like to do, use a timeout. Third down upcoming when we come back. Seven three Louisville more than midway through the first quarter. This is a big part of championship weekend. It continues on ABC and ESPN at four thirty Eastern on ABC. Second rank USC trying to punch their ticket into the BCS championship game. Most believe that'll happen if they beat their rival UCLA. And at seven forty five Eastern on ESPN tonight Rutgers in control of its own destiny. to try to earn the BCS bowl berth out of the Big East and secure at least a uh, tie for the conference championship but Rutgers wins tonight they're in a BCS bowl game and they take on West Virginia third down and three Louisville a deep ball and it is caught and a flag down Harry Douglas the adjustment to the ball Darius Butler had the coverage flag down the catch made at the 37 yard line well, that's trust and you see Harry Douglas the leading receiver on his football team is just going on a takeoff Butler does have good position. Pass interference, number 25 on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. But Douglas goes, goes up and makes the good adjustments with his hips and catches the ball at the highest point, and that's trust. Trust between two veterans making something happen. And how about the call on third and three? Let's go deep. It looked like Douglas had got away with a little push on the hip of Darius Butler. Misidentified the player was 28. Butler had the coverage and was guilty of the penalty. Brom throws through the hands of his intended receiver. Jawan Spillman. Well, two big Big East games today have been a season full of them. As Louisville with a big win over West Virginia. The joy didn't last long when Louisville went to Rutgers, blew a halftime lead, and lost on the field goal by Jeremy Ito. West Virginia was the highest ranked Big East team heading into last week. They got upset at home by South Florida. Of course, another big Big East game was Rutgers lost two weeks ago at Cincinnati when they were in the driver's seat. And the Big East standings and the BCS bid that comes with it. Anthony Allen, the ball carrier, MJ Step made the tackle. Of course, the developments last week with West Virginia losing put Rutgers back into the driver's seat and you look back at that recent history Chris one thing working in Randy Edsel's favor today as they think about an upset in each of the last four weeks the highest ranked Big East team lost West Virginia to Louisville then Louisville to Rutgers then Rutgers to Cincinnati then last week West Virginia lost to South Florida so over the last month being the top ranked Big East team has not been the place to be Mario Urudia the catch and a conversion for Louisville on a 14 yard completion of the 6 6 200 pounder the sophomore from right here in Louisville Danny Lansana Santa made the tackle yeah, Hank Hughes defensive coordinator was telling us in our meeting that hey we don't want Brian Brown to sit back there and have all day and set his feet to throw it well they only rushed three he's going to have all day and he's going to find his big target Mario Urudia who did a, Urudia, who did a great job of recognizing zone sitting down in the zone and waiting for the special delivery from Brown. 14 straight games with a catch for Yerudia playing in the short sleeves. The temperature kickoff is 30 degrees. Don't be deceived by the sunshine. It is chilly here today. Juan Spillman chopped down by Ryan Hennigan and Danny Lansana. Lansana is a junior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Outstanding athlete. Hank Hughes is telling us he was an outstanding basketball player in high school. These folks are bundled up. 
Of course, two days ago it was near 70 degrees here. And that trumpet went through the country. Came through here yesterday. We had sleet and freezing rain and high wind. Now sunshine, but very chilly. Pass intended for Harry Douglas incomplete. Huge third down, obviously, for UConn right here. Louisville's very good at scoring points in the red zone via field goal or through the air. But Louisville has to get some stops on third down. And, and we'll see right here if they make the decision to pressure Brian Brom and not let him sit back there, set his feet, and hurt you. Louisville four out of four on third down today. Brom throws and it's batted down. Well defended along the near sideline by Tyvon Branch, the junior from Cicero, New York, just outside Syracuse. And a veteran making his 18th career start today. You see Barnage here at 6'6 is a nice target. Look at the size difference, but Tyvon Branch uses his quickness and comes with the long left arm, keeping the right arm from hooking the waist of Barnage. Outstanding coverage by Branch. Eric Carmody trying a 37-yard field goal. He is tremendous. 86%. For his career. And 45 field goals made now. A career record here at the University of Louisville. He's the all time leading scorer here already. Sean McDonough along with Chris Spielman. A lot of pressure on Louisville today in Connecticut. As Bobby Petrino said, when you watch them play, they play hard every game. They tend to be in every game. They can't take it for granted. Well, the thing I wanted to see from Louisville, and I'm seeing it, that they, they're coming out here with some enthusiasm, some punch. They realize they're not getting distracted by senior day or any of that other stuff. They have a mission to accomplish, and that's at least a share of the Big East championship, and they're playing like it. It really is the next step for this Louisville program, a trip to a BCS bowl game. They clearly have helped lift the profile of the Big East with their arrival in this conference. If they win today, they will clinch at least a tie for the Big East, as we mentioned. Rutgers in control of its destiny with an eye on the BCS bid out of the Big East because they won head-to-head -head against Louisville. So both teams win today. Rutgers would go to the BCS bowl game, and that would be a precipitous drop for Louisville. They would likely fall from a BCS bowl game to the Sun Bowl where they would take on Oregon State. Andre Dixon popped down at the 19-yard line off the Todd Flannery kickoff. Moselle Axon delivered the big hit on kickoff coverage. One thing Connecticut has to do now is establish a little bit of something, at least a threat, throwing the ball. Louisville's going to stack that line of scrimmage, and they're going to play people close to the line of scrimmage, and you want to get Don uh, Donald Brown off, off early. You need to throw the ball to spread Louisville out a little bit. Randy Edsel's in his eighth year as Connecticut coach. This will be back-to-back -back losing season. In 04, they won the Motor City Bowl, a rousing win over Toledo. They're still the newcomer to Division 1A football. Terrence Jeffers, the catch, one of those true freshman wideouts, and they do make a play in the pass game. Pierce to be a first down near the 29-yard line. Brandon Sharp in coverage. Yeah, Louisville came with a corner blitz right there, and that was good recognition by Bones, as he likes to go by. Seeing the corner blitz, safety one-on-one -on -one with Jeffers. Jeffers beats him on the outcut. Right there, you see Gay coming from his corner position on the blitz, picked up nicely by Brown. And Bones just kind of hangs in that pocket, know he's going to get hit, waiting for Jeffers to make his cut and deliver the strike. So Zach Anderson put the hit on Bonislawski. Anderson has been a force in recent weeks up front, and he's been all over the field here in the first quarter. Chains all the way across for the measurement. It's a first down for Connecticut. Mike Cassidy was telling us that Zach Anderson, what he brings is kind of some speed, yet some size. You've got Peanut Whitehead on the other defensive end. A little light in the pants at 245, but Zach Anderson at 265 has the same type of speed off his pass rush, but obviously a little bit more stout. Anderson Junior College transfer, played two years at East Mississippi Junior College. Donald Brown up 
the middle. A gain of four to the 33-yard line where Amobi Okoye made the tackle, the 19-year-old. Family from Nigeria, they came to this country when Koye was about 12 years old. His mom was an elementary school principal back in Nigeria. He used to go to school with her when he was two, two and a half years old. He'd go sit in the classes of some of his older siblings. He said, I started to learn things. So he was always ahead of the curve. When he got to Huntsville and was 12, he tested well enough to be in high school classes. The ball carrier, Donald Brown, and Okoye right on cue made the tackle. How about what he told us yesterday? He said, I was 12. I thought I could handle ninth grade. They said, we'll give you two weeks to be in ninth grade, and if it doesn't work out, we're going to send you back to middle school. There he is with his family on the field before the game. His dad owns a medical supply business in the Huntsville area. His mom's gotten out of education and is now in nursing school. McCoy said, after a couple weeks, I realized the biology was too <laughs> for me, and in a couple other classes, I was telling the teacher things that maybe they could be doing. They realized that, hey, maybe they should move them ahead another year or two. They signed with Louisville when he was 15 played here when he was 16 the pass on third down intended for De Terrence Jeffers over his head Well, he had Terrence Jeffers open up in the flat and just to go back to Koye second. It's amazing You know, he's uh, just such a smart bright intelligent young man and his body grew with his brain You know, 15 years old to play getting recruited by a division one program is just amazing Really a nice young engaging man he was impressive. The team captain, look out. Here comes the rush. Mavisaris just did get it off. Trent Guy back there this time, and he makes the fair catch at the 24. We talked about the improvement of Akoye this year. We asked Mike Cassidy about it. He said, hey, he's 19. He is still physically developing. He's just becoming a man now as a senior. As I mentioned earlier, he dropped about 15 pounds, Sean. And I asked him why, and he told me the reason was he knew that he was going to have to play a lot more this year. And he, what he did was he stopped eating after 8 o'clock. And that's hard to do for a college kid because they just get going with their chow time at 8 o'clock. He stopped eating. He's playing about 290 and playing well all year. So he tries to drink a lot of water to avoid being hungry late at night. Ron throws, and it's a completion of a 42 to Harry Douglas. Just 5'11", 170 pounds, the junior from Jonesboro, Georgia. And Darius Butler had the coverage. 18 yards and a first down for Louisville. Under a minute to go now in the first quarter. You know, talking to Brian Brown about Harry Douglas. And I asked Brian what makes Harry so good. And you can see that that's his comfort level is Harry's ability to get open and run after the catch. And, and Brian likes to go to him. He might like to go to him a little bit more than Mario Urudia. Until there. He throws to Urudia. Then the Connecticut territory. You mentioned, Chris, their ability, both Urudia and Douglas, to run after the catch. And a good effort in that area by Urudia. 24 on the play, much of it after the completion. Yeah, it's 7-on-7. Seven seven. They're playing a cover, too, but the linebackers aren't extending into the curl area. And when you have skilled receivers, not just physical skill, but mentally skilled, recognizing the weakness of the zone, it's pitch and catch. It's 7-on-7 seven seven out there. Over 100 yards passing. For Brom here in the first quarter, Colby Smith runs for another first down inside the 24-yard line. Dana Delliston, the safety, called upon to make the tackle. That's an 11-yard gain for Smith. We talk about guys taking advantage of a uh, tough situation. Bush goes down. Colby Smith gets the call, and I tell you, Colby Smith is on the radar of a lot of NFL teams. Also, Sean, right now he's tabbed as a possible fifth, sixth, seventh-round guy. And it's all because of his ability and how he played this year. Brom had it slip out of his hands. And recovered by Louisville. Tough to tell if that was a fumble or an incomplete forward pass, but apparently the officials ruled it a fumble. The whistle was not blown, and Brom got it back himself for a loss of about two. End of the first quarter, Louisville. For the win, will at least share the Big East Conference Championship. They lead Connecticut 10 to 3. Back in Chile, Louisville, Kentucky, end of the quarter. The Cardinals lead Connecticut 10 to 3. Michael Bush out since the first game of the season against Kentucky. Looking on, he did take part in Senior Day. They hope he'll be back next year. 
Brian Brahms a junior there's been speculation he might leave after this season he told us yesterday he thinks he will be back hasn't made that decision completely but he sounded pretty certain he'll be back for his senior year he dumped it off to George Stripling for a gain of about four to the 21 here's Aaron Andrews well Sean as we saw that shot of Michael Bush senior Colby Smith has had to rise to the occasion with Bush being out now when Bush went down that first game Colby Smith getting a few tries at it and he did well the first couple games but then he started to his numbers went down and and he told me he was putting way too much pressure on himself he realized just the position he was in but then it was the Syracuse game late in October he really picked it up and his roommate on the road Michael Bush encouraging him giving him advice all the way along Smith will go to the senior bowl the showcase for potential draft picks Pass juggled and dropped by Chris Vaughn and then nearly intercepted by Darius Butler. Vaughn is a Connecticut native. He's from New Haven, Connecticut. Transferred to Louisville after one year at Notre Dame. That's a nice job by Darius Butler. See the change of direction. Chris Vaughn not getting a lot of balls thrown to him. Has a chance to make a play. Might have had his eyes upfield a little bit. Art Carmody, a 38-yard field goal try. Oh, my goodness, he missed. That's the first miss this year for Carmody that was not a block. He was 19 out of 21 for the season this year. And the two misses before that one had both been blocks. Win, and you're in. Donald Brown the carry out to the 26 yard line. John it's amazing that Donald Brown has been able to run like he has the past few ball games. Connecticut offensively has started nine different combinations as the offensive line and it's a credit to the coaches and Randy Etzel for getting these guys to open up holes for a powerful freshman in Donald Brown. Excellent back. Terry Pauly, the senior. And in his final game, he's had an injury-filled career. Being the leading freshman running back in the country back in 2002. Bonaslawski in trouble. Escapes for the moment. Now gets rid of it. And it's broken up. Just beyond the first down marker. Good work by Rod Council, the backup defensive back, to knock it away from Terrence Jeffers. McCauley did a good job of picking up the blitz. And Bonislawski does a great job avoiding the sack and actually delivers a catchable ball to Council. Again, perfect timing. You see how that left arm, he secures the tackle with his right and brings that left arm across the body and starts breaking at the ball to knock her out. And he did just that, knock her out. And this time earlier in the year with a broken ankle. Connecticut looking for its first third down conversion of the day. It's been a struggle for them all year. Five man rush. And Bonaslawski goes down back of the 11 yard line. Latarius Thomas, the blitzing safety, got there. And it's a big loss 15 yards. That's what Mike Cassidy can do. He can draw him up in the dirt with the best of them. You go here, I go there, you go there. And it puts a lot of pressure on the offense because you never know where they're coming from. Latarius Thomas comes from the corner on the outside. He's a safety lined up outside, and they can't account for him. Then you see the speed to finish. Somebody for Connecticut better block Zach Anderson today as well. Low snap. Travis Harris handled it. Short punt. Look out. Very nearly struck a Louisville player. The Huskies saying it did. And it did, according to the officials. Connecticut ball. It hit John Russell, who was just trying to block for Louisville. And Yukon recovered. Leave it with Steve Browse. Yeah, you got Recovered by the kicking team. First down. Right there, off the, the off the foot. The field is under review. Yep, it's off the foot of Latarius Thomas, number 30. And that's where the poison call. If you're the returner, poison, poison, and has a punt return team member, you've got to get away from the football because punt defense or punt offense is taught to drive you into the ball. You hear poison, 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 get out of there. You see right there, it got the heel of the spike. 
And punt team has been the Achilles heel of the UConn special teams units. And so far today, it's been two of their biggest plays. The biggest plays for UConn. My question was, did it hit Terry Baltimore of Connecticut first? Looked like he jumped over the ball. Does it hit him on the way back, though? Well, it doesn't matter once it hit. Yeah. See, well, Terry is Thomas. That's, you know, and that would be, you can't tell if it hits. No, doesn't Baltimore. look like it hit him. I don't think it hit him in either direction. That's a lack of communication on punt return for Louisville. You got to get those guys away from that football. And you see right there. Yeah. Lance Lance enough put Lance Santa puts it pushes Thomas into the ball. That's what you're taught to do. Well, we didn't hear an announcement from Dennis Hannigan, but the play is going to stand as called. So a couple of breakdowns in the punt game for Louisville. And Bobby Petrino agitated on the sideline. Doesn't take much to get him a little on the cranky side. Bronislavski throws and has the tight end Dan Murray. And now the ball's out, and Louisville takes it back. Gavin Smart recovered the fumble. Malik Jackson popped it out. Randy Edson saying, Dan Murray, how can this be? We just got a break, and you'll give it right back to them. Watch Malik with the wraparound. Nice punch it out of there, Malik. Get it, baby. Ball security. Don't see it. Of big plays, and here's another impact play. Second forced fumble of the season. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, and Aaron Andrews. Louisville dominating statistically. And a couple of problems on the punt team, giving Connecticut chances. UConn hasn't capitalized very much with just the three points. A little trickeration, and it backfires as Harry Douglas is dropped for a loss by Tyvon Branch. Way back at the 26, that's a loss of eight. Yeah, I understand why you do that because Douglas is a big time playmaker. But when you've established a line of scrimmage and you're winning those physical battles, I don't think there was a need for the reverse at that particular time. UConn's defense, even though they're 104th against the rush, they do play hard. They've played some teams that are among the best in the country in rushing the ball, most notably West Virginia. Pass out in the flat, some poor tackling. And Colby Smith took advantage of it for additional yardage out to the 33 before he finally went out of bounds. Seven yards on the game, and Ernest Cole, who is the Connecticut nickelback, slow to get up, senior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Two things that Ernest needs to leave. Keep your head up, see what you hit, hit what you see. Do not duck your head, and you also have those arms. Go ahead and wrap up with those arms. But as soon as you duck your head, bad things happen, man. Bad things. Watch here. See the head go down? That's yucky. Don't like it. It's dangerous. Kobe Smith, again, showing his versatility, catching the ball and running with power. And I'm just glad Ernest Cole's okay. Yeah. You put your head down, Sean. You're in a vulnerable position. I've seen it too many times. I hate it. Head up. You think by this stage in his career, seeing he's played a lot, too, he'd be... A better tackling technician than that. Let me let me tell you why. It's it's against human nature to see what you hit. Mm -hmm. It's it gets human human nature to put your eyeballs through somebody's face mask. Human nature tells you to duck your head. That's a fear that all football players have to overcome. I'm not saying he's playing afraid. I'm saying that he's got to make a conscious decision to see what he hits, and that takes practice and reps. Get up, young man. Uh, I get nervous when I see that. Cole just back this week. He didn't play last week in their heartbreaking loss to Cincinnati. He had a knee injury. They lost by three last week to the Bearcats at home in East Hartford. And Cincinnati scored 10 points in the final two and a half minutes of the game to come from behind and beat Connecticut. UConn four and seven for the year and one and five in the Big East. This is pull off a huge upset today. They're about a four touchdown underdog. Yeah, and it, and it would make their season. I mean, you don't have much of the season, but it would make their season if they could knock Louisville off. Trying to do it in Louisville where the 
Cardinals have won 17 straight home games. Second longest home winning streak active in the nation. And a man wide open. Harry Douglas, touchdown Louisville. 67 yards. equals points for the Cardinals. Second week in a row. Douglas is having a big yardage game. Carmody adds the extra point. Last week at Pittsburgh, he had four catches for 132 yards, including a 75-yard touchdown. That was an average of 33 per play last week. So far today, four catches, 124 yards in a TD. Seventeen to three, Louisville. Early in the second quarter, another big play by this Louisville pass offense. They average fifteen and a half yards per completion. That leads the nation. They just scored a sixty-seven-yard touchdown pass. Todd Flannery's kickoff down to Robert McLean. He's taken down to the 21. Let's go back and look at the big play to Harry Douglas. Yeah, everybody talks about Tampa 2, and all that is is safeties are going to play outside. The linebacker is going to run down the middle of the field. But you could not let this man, the number three receiver, Douglas, run untouched through the middle of the field and expect the linebacker to run him. Plus, your safety down here jumps outside. There's no help deep. And when you play against a skilled player like Brian Brom, both mentally and physically, he will exploit the mental air in the coverage, and that's exactly what they did. The linebacker stopped, the safety jumped outside too early. No help deep, they'll hurt you. As you said, both Douglas and Yerudia have a chance to go over 1,000 for the season. Douglas has, now it's Donald Brown trying to go 79 yards. He won't make it all the way, but he'll make it a healthy distance to the 32-yard line of Louisville, 48 yards. William Gay got him from behind. It's a heck of a job by UConn. No, they're not going to throw the ball. You'll see the big block, kickout block inside. And Donald Brown makes a nice cut and vision. And it's off and running. And the speed of the corner, Gay, brings him down. And that was Thomas who got knocked out earlier in a kickoff return, coming back with the big kickoff block. Donald well, Brown, the freshman, has had some big games against quality competition. Ran for 199 yards against Rutgers. Deep throw, and the man was open, but it's incomplete. Intended for Terrence Jeffers. But check that, Stephen Browse. Bonislawski, to me, he's, he's almost shot putting the ball. Just go ahead and let her rip, young man. Let her rip. They're going after he's kind of pushing, almost aiming the ball. He's got to go ahead and throw it down the field. Let his guy run under. Browse will make a play for you. Watch the guy. It's kind of a shot put here. See, watch. Right here's the pressure. And look, just, oh, he just kind of shot put it. Rip it down there. Slip the rock. On a draw, it's Brown again. Breaks through some ankle tackles and has another first down. Out of bounds to the 16-yard line. Tackled by Brandon Sharp. Brown followed up that game at Rutgers. A lot of friends and family in attendance. He's from about 20 miles from the Rutgers campus. With a 205-yard game on 43 carries against Pittsburgh. Those two games are part of the last four totals. Which he's rushed for an average of 138 per game, over five yards per carry. Rob Ambrose, the offensive player, talking about how incredibly strong he is. And we've seen examples of that power. There he is again up the middle and down to the 10-yard line. Six more. It'll be second down and four. Nine carries, 92 yards from Brown. Yeah, when, what's happening is Louisville's trying to bring some type of pressure from the outside, but they aren't covering the inside gaps, and UConn is just exploiting it, getting a man advantage by pulling Donald Thomas, and Brown is just following the big fella, number 55. 
And on the verge of his fourth 100 yard game of the season he also went over 100 in the season opener against the University of Rhode Island a big Connecticut win. And he powers down near the goal line down to the one where Amobi Okoye made the tackle. That's Connecticut looking to get a touchdown and get right back into this one that does get Brown over 100 to 101 on just 10 carry. He ran through a Moby Okoye right there Sean a got him down but he after he ran through him. Omobi's got to get his head across his body and Donald Brown you're right the strength is evident in his power of running. Lou Allen comes in now with the goal line extra effort and he gets in touchdown for Lou Allen the sophomore from Salem Connecticut his fifth touchdown of the season and the Huskies get right back into the ball game down by eight with the extra point to come for coach Edsel a yeah, nice counter punch by Connecticut huh take it and say okay guess what we're going to shove it down your throat and there's nothing you can do about it Louisville and that's exactly what they did. Tony Cherivino to attempt the extra point. They've missed three extra points as a team this season. That one's good. That's as many as the rest of the Big East has missed combined. That one looked to be tipped by William Gay and still got up and through. Nine minutes to go in the half. quarterbacks in the country you wonder what he'd be able to do if he could stay fully healthy for a season last year a knee injury that lingered into this season then the thumb injury and he still has been among the most productive quarterbacks in the country in each of the last two seasons and those numbers today aren't too shabby either he makes good decisions with the ball where to go with the ball a very smart player on top of his physical ability. Grant Guy bringing, running back the kickoff by Craig Domino. And he did not make the 20 yard line chopped down by Alan Barnes. By the way, we have the duck back. We missed the duck last week. Must be rabbit season. <laughs> well, I'm going to let that go quickly. <laughs> Louisville has had a first team all conference quarterback the last seven seasons. It was the last non Louisville first team quarterback. Brown comes out throwing and it is juggled and still caught with flags down. Gary Barnage the tight end the 33 yard catch despite the interference from MJE step. It's the same thing no matter if it's Douglas or Barnage if you do not hinder the inside receivers released down the middle of the Pass field. Interference, number 35 on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. You have no shot. You just stretch the field. He's running straight down the field untouched. And you can see where the interference comes with the right arm and the hook. <laughs> Question back eight years in Conference USA. They were in Conference USA back then. Flag down as Colby Smith turns the corner and gets run out by MJ East. Up. But there's a flag in the middle of the field. Thrown in the secondary. Coming late, usually behind the play. And the one thing is an offensive lineman, which you do not want to do. Or anybody on offensive for that matter. Holding number 85 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Is block or hold behind the play? Well, do you want to guess? Let's go back eight years, Conference USA. Louisville back then was in Conference USA. I don't know. Last time they did not have their conference's oh. first team all conference QB. Sean King and those terrific two lane teams of the late. 1990s under uh, Tommy Bob. Yeah, Rich Rodriguez, I believe, was the office coordinator. He was. Well, here's Brom. Lost 
from the pocket. Boy, he's feeling it with the legs today. Dives forward very near the first down inside the 39 where he met Darius Butler. 11 yard gain for Brom. Again, it's recognition. Everybody's dropping off in zone and they're so deep. And you see Brian Brom is a pretty good athlete and, and actually delivers the blow on Butler. I doubt the Connecticut coaches spend much time this week saying, hey, you have to be really <laughs> yeah. careful about Brom taking it down and running out of the pocket. Yeah, 35 yards. That might be a career. Second down and one, George Strickland. There's enough, it appears, for the first down. He lunged across that yellow line. Danny Lansana made the tackle. First down, Louisville. Trying to answer a very impressive drive by Connecticut. They went 79 yards in just six plays. Brown carried for 78 of the 79 yards on the Connecticut drive that got them within a touchdown. We're more than midway through the second quarter now. And there are a lot of Connecticut fans today in West Virginia. It's still possible that West Virginia could be a BCS bowl team, but they need Connecticut to win this game. Create the possibility of a three-way tie for the conference title, in which case the highest-ranked team in the BCS rankings would go. And should Louisville lose here today and West Virginia beat Rutgers, it's likely West Virginia would be the highest of the three in the BCS ranking. Yeah, I've just been so impressed with all of the Big East this year. It's been great football. I think it uh, proved a lot of people wrong. Brom throws, and the catch made by Yerudia. Forward progress with the first down to the 25-yard line. Aaron? Well, Sean, Brian Brom, obviously Louisville is in this kid's blood. His father, Oscar, played here in the late 60s. His brothers, Greg and Jeff, both playing receiver quarterback here. Jeff, his quarterback's coach in his ear quite often, and his brother Greg, the director of ops here at Papa John Cardinal Stadium. And you know that if they do get a chance to get this BCS bid, be huge for Brian because all he's ever heard about is Louisville. And by the way, Jeff has a two-year-old son, Brady, and I've already been told he will play quarterback as well. <laughs> well. He already has a scholarship offer. Throw to the end zone by Brian Brom. Touchdown, Harry Douglas. Just, just do what Uncle Brian does, young man. He'll be a good quarterback. Patience. Allowing your playmaker to get open. Then there's the touch pass. He can zip it, he can touch it, he can do what he wants with it. Touchdown. 25 yarder. Go with the 67 yarder moments ago for Douglas. Five catches, 149 yards receiving, and two scores for Douglas. And Carmody adds the extra point. Brian Brown takes the Cardinals 82 yards on just seven plays and needed only two minutes and 51 seconds to do it. They lead by two touchdowns. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, and Aaron Andrews back at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Our college football coverage presented by Cars.com. This morning on the field, Patrick Henry Hughes, a trumpet player in the Louisville band. Perhaps you saw the feature on Patrick and his dad, Patrick John Hughes. Patrick's blind, born with a genetic disorder that prevents him from fully straightening his arms as well, but participates in the marching band as his dad pushes his wheelchair around the field to keep them in formation. A remarkable story. They're getting ready for halftime. Teamwork, man. The ultimate form of teamwork right there. Dad attends all the practices. He also helps Patrick get around the campus to classes. Works the graveyard shift so that he can be with his son during the day. The kickoff return is fumbled by Robert McLean. And they're still battling for the ball at the 18-yard line. And the strongest man wins, it appears, and it's the Louisville Cardinals who come away with it. Lamar Miles knocked the ball out. 
Tells you right here. I mean, there's a lot of things happen down under this pile. You can see he does have the ball secured. Yeah, there it's a fight. Away. Yeah, Stephen Gar, I believe, is the guy that comes yeah. out with the number 23. But if you review this. It's under review. And watch, the ball is in his possession right there. And he's down. And you see Stephen Gar coming in. Yes, he's, Stephen Gar comes in and rips it out. And that's, that's part of the deal, one of those piles. And with the instant replay, you can see that Connecticut should maintain the football. Yeah, but you also saw we thought that they should have had a touchdown yeah. on a uh, fumbled punt return that was instead ruled a muff. And you see Stephen Gard right here. See, he comes in late and he starts digging. He comes in there way late to get the ball out of there. It's been a busy half for Dennis Hennigan and his officiating crew in the replay booth. We spoke with Randy Edsel. Who's already played Rutgers and West Virginia? So who do you think is the best team in the Big East? Certainly up for debate between Louisville, Rutgers, and West Virginia. He said, "Well, we've only seen Louisville on tape, but based on what I've seen, I would say Louisville is the most talented team and the best team in this league." I'll tell you, between those three, and, he, and obviously Louisville, West Virginia, Rutgers are the top three in the Big East, and if you play them, they would split. All three of those guys played a whole season. They would have 500 records. They're, they're that even, and uh, I'm impressed with Rutgers' defense. They really get after you, number one in the Big East. And this offense here, the offense of West Virginia with Pat White and Steve Slayton, just amazing. Right there is the ball. The ball is out, and there's the recovery by Connecticut. And he had it. You know, and he's down because the officials didn't blow the whistle. They allowed it to continue and gave Louisville the opportunity to rip it away. After review, there is indisputable video evidence. The number 42 of Connecticut had possession of the ball on the ground. First down. I knew we were going to get one right sooner or later, partner. Robert McClain. He's been in the, been in the mix of all these little special team incidents. But he was able to control the football and get it. You gotta hold on to it for your dear life though. There's a lot of things that happen, a lot of bad things happen in that pile sometimes. I was told a couple years ago by a person involved in officiating conference USA that Bobby Petrino spends more time talking to officials than any coach he had ever been around in his officiating career. He uh, spends a great deal of time Getting after the officials. Uh, he's working them now. He's working anybody with the striped shirt on. Right there. Bobby, they got the call right. Go coach your team. <laughs> on the reverse, Brad Kanyu, who was a track athlete in high school and is going to someday run track at Connecticut. Freshman out of Johnstown, Pennsylvania, chopped down. He was going to run track in this offseason, but He's made the conversion to wide receiver and said he wants to take a little more time to build up his body for football and work on his receiving skills. Perhaps in another year he'll run track as well for the Huskies. He's had made great improvement as the season's progressed with his receiving skills and running routes and blocking. K A N U C K pronounced Kanye. He toured in the Sports Innovation Board. So good. He's remember it's just Yukon backwards. Dan Murray got belted backwards but held on. You see a costly fumble earlier in this half. He hangs on for a 10 yard gain. He was considered a candidate for the John Mackey Award as the best tight end of the country when the season began, but suffered a sprained ankle, a severely sprained ankle in preseason. It's hampered him all year long. That's a nice catch right there. No one's going to get popped and yet able to hold on. Under five minutes to go till halftime. UConn back to the ground. Brown and Brown up the middle. Nine. That's about his average per carry so far. Let's check in with Chris Fowler back in the studio. Sean, thanks. A potential opponent for the Big East champ in a BCS bowl game. The champions of the ACC. It's Georgia Tech in the blue unis today on third and goal. They look for Calvin Johnson. The ball misfires. They settle for a field goal. Early lead over Wake Forest on ABC. Give it to him. 
Yeah, long handoff to the big fella. He'll score. Second and one here. There are representatives of the Orange Bowl here at Papa John Cardinal Stadium today. Possibility that should Louisville win, Rutgers lose tonight, Louisville would go to the Orange Bowl to meet the winner of that ACC championship game. Bonislawski's pass out of bounds incomplete. You know, be third like down the, and one. You like the call, the confidence of UConn right there to take a shot deep on your so-called waist down, but their ability and confidence to run the football right at Louisville. They'll go ahead and pound this one. You have Donald Brown out of there. They actually Lou Allen in there. He makes the call, and I don't think he got it. Randy Edsel played at Syracuse, coached at Syracuse under Frank Maloney and then Dick McPherson. I remember Dick McPherson when he was the head coach, second and one, a lot of times it was runoff tackle. And we like to say in broadcast, it's a free down. Right, now go right. ahead, launch one, take a chance. Coach Mack would almost always run it on second and one. And one of the reporters said, Coach, how come you always run the ball on second and one? He said, because I like first downs. <laughs> you know, and the more I watch football, the more I think that philosophy is pretty good. When you get fancy on second and one, as Connecticut did, saying we'll get it on third down and one, I'm not sure they got it. Yeah, and I know that Lou Allen is a, a bigger back at 235 as opposed to Donald Brown at 210. But Donald Brown, as you said, Sean, he's a strong, powerful guy. Great leverage and with his legs they're short well you better go for it then what do you have to lose well you've gotten two turnovers on the punt team <laughs> I don't know that <laughs> I don't think you can count no. on the third one no no though. no I mean you're four and seven you're the big underdog you're gonna have to match scores with these guys they've already got 24 points on the board and they are gonna go for it I like it in at tailback. He gets the call. He juggled the handoff and did not appear to get the first down. He did not. Earl Heyman, the sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky, dropped the play for a loss. And I bet Coach Edsel and his staff would like to have that second and one over again. Yeah, Earl Heyman made the play in the first one. Now he hits Donald Brown head up and doesn't give an inch. And stones his momentum. That's two plays in a row in short yardage for Earl Heyman. And again, you see the youth and the depth of this defense for Louisville stepping up, making a play when a play needs to be made, Earl. It's the end zone shot right here now. And off to Colby Smith. Ahead for a couple. Here's Chris Fowler. All right, thanks, Sean. Coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, we'll check in on the ACC. Wake Forest trying to complete the impossible dream, their second conference title in about a half century. Plus, Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreet will join me with predictions. And there is disagreement, maybe not on this one, can USC survive in advance of the championship game? And what about the collision of Big Reds, the Cornhuskers and the Sooners in the Big 12? All coming up at halftime. Hit as he throws. He got walloped by Danny Lansana. There's a flag down in the secondary. Lansana, the physical middle linebacker, came on a blitz. Well, in the There's NFL, a flag down to the yeah. 24. In the NFL, there'd be a flag down in the backfield, Sean. As Lansana gave him a good hit. I say a clean hit, but in the NFL, that would have been a 15 yarder. The guy probably would have been fined $500,000 for hitting a quarterback too hard. <laughs> Holding number 36 on the defense. Ten-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. Dana Delliston, a safety. Called for the penalty. Watch right here. You'll see Lance Santa come and watch the hit that Brown will take. See that? That would have been a, that, that, That's right there. Ten thousand dollars. Defense line, 15-yard penalty. It was a good hit. Good toughness by Brom hanging in there, waiting for the last second to get the ball out. And Santa launched himself nicely in the Brom. First and 10 at the Connecticut 27 yard line. Short drop by Brom. And the pass caught by Yerudia. 
Defensive back trying to close quickly to pick it off, but Darius Butler got there late. There's a flag down near the line of scrimmage. After the play was over, personal foul, striking number six on the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Dan Davis, the defensive end, junior from Plainfield, New Jersey. You got Randy Etzel waiting for Dan to come off the sidelines right there. He's getting, his, he's getting handled pretty yeah. well. And he gives him the, the old head slap. Right there. That's a good job by. Right in the bottom of the Benson. screen there. Head slap to Marcel Benson. Yeah. Coach Etzel wasn't pleased with that. Well, they've had a chance to be much closer in this game than they are. They have capitalized on some Louisville mistakes and they've made too many of their own. Anthony Allen slices down inside the 10 to the 6. Where Dante Moore made the stop. It's been a frustrating year for UConn. And the frustration continues. Randy Etzel thinks they're going to be good. He said with the young team we had coming back, we hoped for a seven and five, six and six season. Get into a bowl game. And once the injuries mounted and the six players were dismissed from the program. And with the strength of this Big East Conference. Bowl eligibility was a goal that was not able to be accomplished. Anthony Allen down to the five. The clock down to a minute 43 left in the half. Two timeouts left for Louisville and three for UConn. The other thing that's going to help Randy Etzel build this program is the facilities are UConn are some of the finest in the country. And then you're able to go ahead and compete against facilities like they have here at Louisville, like they have at Cincinnati with Bearcats. Just uh, he'll get it going. Just got to stay patient with them. The students need to stay patient and they'll get it going up there. Timeout called by Louisville. The play clock hadn't even started, Chris. I'm a little surprised Bobby Petrino didn't let the clock run down a little more. He has plenty of time on the five yard line. You score now, you leave almost a full minute and a half on the clock for Connecticut. Yeah, I think that Bobby just has great uh, confidence in his guys to score points. He understands that Connecticut doesn't throw the ball very well. And maybe he wants to try to get him and stop him again and try to get a field goal because he has a pretty darn good kicker. So Louisville's so powerful offensively, though. They're so balanced. The one thing they do well, and they're being patient today, is they're staying with the running game, Sean. That's something they didn't do all year. Bobby Petrino spends a lot of time, obviously, in this stadium, but even more this week. His son, Nick, an outstanding quarterback at Trinity High School in the Kentucky Class 4A State Final right here at Papa John Stadium. Nick Petrino, just 5'9", about 165 pounds, a senior, threw for four touchdowns on a nasty night, driving rain for much of the game. He ran for 79. His brother, Bobby Jr., is a sophomore defensive back. And Trinity won the state championship for the fifth time the last six years. Second time with Nick Petrino as the quarterback. Ryan Brom as it go through the hands of Yerudia. Brom played high school football in this stadium as well. He threw for more than 10,000 yards in high school. Here's Aaron Andrews. Guys, the Petrino family having to deal with their own little injury yesterday. We were told as we were getting ready to sit down with Bobby Petrino, his son Nick in that state championship game towards MCL. I talked to dad on the field today, Coach Petrino, and he said, nah, he'll be fine. Yeah, it didn't require surgery. He certainly looked happy and healthy after the game. No indication there that he had a knee injury. He had six weeks of rehab, and then Nick should be fine. He might come play here in the U of L. Art Carmody kicks a 22-yard field goal. Young Nick has also had a couple of 1AA scholarship offers, although they've changed the name now, Division 1AA, so we need to get in the habit of the, uh, referring to it by its new name, the Championship Division. The Bold Division, what used to be 1A, and the Championship Division, 1AA. I like the old way better. <laughs> you know, everybody kind of knows the old way. Well. And uh, now it's going to take a while to get used to the new way. Yeah, and uh, is it still Division 2? I, you know, I don't know. I haven't gotten that far. I'm still trying to get this down. It's not 1A and 1AA anymore. But uh, Bobby Petrino may well have his son come play for him next year. Nevada, apparently, in the formerly 1A level of football is also interested. I asked Brian Brom yesterday, have you seen Nick Petrino play? He said, yeah, he has a rocket for an arm for a little guy. Again, they're, they're certainly uh, 
Doug Flutie would have something to say about that, saying, give young Mr. Petrino a shot. And he moves around. That's what he needs to get in the right system and the right offense. I don't know if this system would be what he's looking for because you see that with Brian Brown, he takes a couple two steps, hangs in that pocket. But Brian's also 6'4 and can see over offensive line. And with the recent run of great quarterbacks, Chris Redman, Stefan LaFors, David Bone, now Brian Brown. They have Matt Sims coming in next year, one of the most highly recruited quarterbacks. In high school football this year in New Jersey. He is the son of Phil Sims, the brother of Chris Sims. And they've had a nice run of quarterbacks here back to the late 90s with Browning Nagel, then Jeff Brown, Brian's brother, now the quarterback coach. Chris Redman wasn't as successful in the NFL as some thought he would be. And Stefan LaFour is the predecessor to Brian Brom. They're trying to catch on now in Canada. And that is quarterback started at all, didn't Johnny he? you. Yeah. Johnny Unitas. And just think of the how that helps your recruiting when you're going after some of the top quarterbacks in the country, Sean. You, you made you're going back to the all big east and conference USA. They're always first team. There's a reason. They breed them here. The whole system is quarterback friendly. They get a lot of great skill position talent around those quarterbacks. Donald Brown, the ball carrier. Brandon Sharp made the tackle. Brian Brown likely to come back, as we said, next year. But like Nick Petrino, he grew up around football, and there's a lot to be said for that. Brian Brown watched his bro dad and brother's brothers play. He remembers the old days, which weren't that long ago, 10 or 15 years ago of Louisville football, when they played in kind of a rundown minor league baseball stadium not far from here. Times have certainly changed. Now they're in this beautiful nine-year-old facility, which is going to be expanded by 21,000 seats over the next couple of years. Outstanding half for Louisville on a mission. Championship in their eyes. Louisville with the lead at halftime, and now Patrick Hughes and his dad about to take center stage with the man. Here's Chris. Sean, thank you. Tremendous story as we welcome you to the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Going by Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit. You vaguely remember how to do this. <laughs> Lee, uh, your thoughts on the first half in which obviously Louisville goes in knowing yeah. they don't need yeah. their A game to beat the Huskers. Yeah, they, they didn't bring their A game. They're just going right through the motions. You can tell that offensively when they missed some tackles. But I think the key play came when Connecticut went fourth and one and they stuffed them right there. If Connecticut had any chance of catching Louisville, that's the chance. And now... I'll tell you what I said before. I think Louisville will score enough points in this game to beat the Connecticut basketball team. They'll get at least 55 to 60. I'm telling you. Uh, this is just a difference between yeah. recruiting. This, yeah. is, this is athletic ability. Uh, with Louisville, this is a team that most of the teams they have played in this conference have been able to run by. And as we've seen, when they've been able to sit back and give Brom time to throw, he's picking apart the, the Husky secondary. I think it's going to be more of the same. I think Louisville is going to try to pile it on here and then sit back and watch what happens tonight between Rutgers and West Virginia. Said it this morning on game day. I think this is the team that will represent the Big East and the BCS. That'll happen if the Mountaineers knock yeah. off the Scarlet yeah. Knights. Yep. Yep. Maybe some disagreement. Yep. We'll have some picks coming up. Meanwhile, the opponent potentially with the Big East champ in the BCS bowl game might come out of the eight. Every day you play to be the best. Moments ago at halftime, Patrick Henry Hughes, the trumpet player, and his dad, Patrick John Hughes, part of the Louisville marching band. The Louisville offense is so often the case impressive in the first half, but the execution of the Hughes was much better. Well, the song was appropriate. I believe that was the theme to Superman and uh, for, for Patrick and his father. It's just outstanding. True, the essence of teamwork right there. What you give will grow, and that's growing on me right now. It's just awesome. And an important football game for the Louisville football program, trying to earn at least a share of the Big East title. Perhaps a BCS Bowl bid should Rutgers lose tonight. And Brian Brom demonstrating again he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Rutgers coach Greg Schiano said whenever he comes out, he's going to be a surefire first-round pick, and he played like it today. Yeah, he, do he doesn't miss. And when he throws, he had he's 15 for 20 with a couple drops. But the thing that's been impressive, not only his decision-making, but his running of the football, Sean. He's run the ball better than I thought Brian could run it. 
Really tucking and going and showing some good speed and really nobody gaining on him when he does decide to run. Still not the most impressive report. How about Patrick Hughes? You know, not only the trumpet player, but he is a concert pianist who's played at the Kennedy Center in Washington. He's a straight-A student with the help of his dad. Kickoff goes out of bounds from Todd of Flannery. By the kicking team. Love Bobby Patrick's philosophy in life. He said, God line, made me blind, touchdown. didn't give me the ability to walk. Big deal. He gave me the talent to play piano and trumpet and all that good stuff. And he gave Brian Brom the talent to play quarterback, and he threw for 258 yards and two touchdowns in that first half. Yeah, and it's a, we were asked him about his injured thumb. He missed two games with that injured thumb, and it's really the wrap on it is just precautionary. It's feeling good, and it's, he's shown that today. No effects. Star by far for Connecticut in the first half with 116 yards on just 13 carries. His first carry of the third quarter goes to the 38 for a gain of three. William Gay and Nate Harris double teamed him. That's what's been impressive if you want to take a positive from what Connecticut did the first half was they were able to run the ball. And what makes that so impressive is that Louisville knows they can't throw it consistently. the quarterback and this loss has gone all the way he got belted as he throws and it's incomplete and he has to get up Nate Harris hit him he said they do not have a healthy backup quarterback Darius Butler a cornerback who was an option quarterback in high school as the backup Rob Ambrose the offensive coordinator was telling us Matt is very tough if you have a quarterback who needs to stay healthy he's a good guy to have in this situation because he will get up off the canvas and he's a smart kid and, and although he did miss Dan Murray right there where he did not have to take that hit Sean he had Dan Murray five yards in front of him all he had to do was flip in the ball they would have had a first and ten third and down seven Anthony Barksdale in at fullback. They're playing without Deion Anderson today. Their fullback, a senior, one of their best players. He's a pinched nerve in his neck. He's their top senior NFL prospect. Good throw under duress by Bonislavski. And a big gainer down to the 30 yard line, perhaps even the 29 of Louisville. 32 yards. Yeah, to Brad Conyu. Yeah, Bonislavski's getting up slow. Watch the shot he takes right here. But he lets Conyu. Get to the open and then find a hole in the zone blitz. And that's the toughness you were talking about, Sean. Knowing you're going to take the shot, but allowing your receiver to get to the open area and delivering a ball at the perfect time. E.J. Hernandez was the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year. Sophomore from Bristol, Connecticut, but he scuffled in a win against Indiana in the third game of the season, threw for just 27 yards. So they went to Bonislavski for four games. One only one of them went back to Hernandez. But then he got hurt, so Bonislavski has started these last two ball games against Cincinnati and Louisville. Donald Brown tackled by Amobi Okoye. Randy Edsel said last week's game against Cincinnati was the best performance of Bonislavski's career. He was also a part-time starter last year. Again, he's, he's been around their program and system a long time, and I'll tell you, there's no substitute for the toughness, and he has it physically and mentally. Rob Ambrose, the coordinator, said he's been in a lot of meetings over the years with Dan Orlovsky and the other quarterbacks, and he's learned a lot, even though he hasn't played much. Brown tackled by Anderson. Here's Aaron. Well, Sean, up 17, the Louisville Cardinals. I asked Bobby Petrino on his way out from the half what concerns him the most. UConn's run. And he said, us making dumb mistakes. He also mentioned just a half left for these 15 seniors. How about this? A 21 and 1 record here at Papa John's. 39 and 9 record for these guys. Unbelievable. Petrino's first recruiting class, guys. Well, his record's 39 and 9, and that's the record for these four year seniors. The only loss in this stadium under Petrino to Memphis in 03. 17 wins in a row since. Only USC with a longer current home winning streak. Great catch and a low throw. Brandon Young extended that left hand and caught it. The senior with a short gain on the play to about the 25. You said a great catch by Brandon Young and it puts him in a fourth and five situation. 
And certainly, if you're UConn, you're going to try to get some points here. And it, that might have put them in a position where the kicker has enough of a leg to get it there because I was watching them warm up pregame and he didn't have enough to get it from 45 yards. Matt Newsy, who tries the long field goals, is on for a 42 yarder. It is no good. Hit the upright. Newsy has a great leg. Unfortunately, it's been that kind of a season for Randy Edsel's field goal kickers. He's used three of them. And this has more often than not been the result. Well, you see, it's good snap, good hold. He hit the ball well, and you didn't get the bounce. A lot of times it gets that deflection. You just hold your breath to see which way it goes. You can see and plenty of leg. That's off yeah. the top of the upright from 42 yards. Yeah. Went outside the white stake, so no good. Well, the frustration continues for Connecticut. Louisville's first possession of the second half. They come out throwing. Brom to Gary Barnage, the tight end. And he has a first down and a pickup of 12 out to the 37 yard line. MJ East F made the tackle. Yeah, Ty Branch was right there. Could have made the hit on Barnage. But again, I'm seeing some of the UConn DBs, and I would show this as a training film. They're starting to duck their head on contact because of the size. I don't know why. But see what you hit, hit what you see. Branch missed him completely. Bobby Petrino calling the plays with the help from his brother. Paul Petrino, the offensive coordinator. They dial up a run for Colby Smith. Paul Petrino, one of the five finalists for the Frank Broyles Award, which goes to the top assistant in college football. Great honor when we spoke with Paul Petrino yesterday. He's up in the coaches box. He said, you know, there are about a thousand assistant coaches at this level of college football, so to be one of five truly is an honor. It would be nice to win the award, but as long as we're winning, I'm happy. He does a good job with the, the offense as a whole. Brom throws, caught by Yerudia in the Connecticut territory. Again, plenty of run after the catch. Paul Petrino liked it. He should with the 25-yard game. You know, it's, it's a nice job and a nice design by Louisville. What they're doing, they're going to clear everybody out down the middle, recognize man coverage, and it's tough for Butler to stay with Yerudia. Yerudia recognizes man, just keeps bringing a crossing route. There's no way Butler can stay with, and they clear out the other receivers, and he's off and running to the races. Smith in trouble and dropped for a loss by Dante Moore. I don't know what Paul Petrino said yesterday. We asked him about the new timing rules that really take opportunities away from the offense. He said, I couldn't hate anything more than I hate the new timing rules. <laughs> well, you know what side of the ball he coaches on. Now, you go over to Coach Cassidy on the defensive side. They love the new timing rules, but certainly I think there's going to be some adjustments made at the end of the year. Looking deep, and now he is sacked by Lindsey Witten. First sack for Connecticut today. Three and a half sacks for the year for Witten, a true freshman out of Glenville High School, Cleveland, Ohio. Of course, Ted Ginn came out of Glenville High School, his dad, the coach. And Witten played there as, as well. They would have preferred he not have to play this year, but because of the injuries, he's played and he's played well. Well, they did a little X game right there. He just found and picked his way, and also. Troy Smith, Sean, was the quarterback at Glenville yeah. High School. So Coach How's Giddy, he? Any good? Rumor has it, he's pretty decent. Might see him on a few of these award shows that are coming up. Play clock about to run out. Brahm a low snap, manages to scoop it up. And now he takes off running. And he lunges very near the first down. Looks like he did not quite get there. About a half yard short. Well, that's 14 more on the run for Brom. That's a veteran right there, and Brian Brom, poor snap. He still gets his eyes downfield, realizes the pocket is collapsing, and he said, Chris, I'm running well today. Let me tuck it and go. And he did, almost getting the first down, and I like Coach Petrino's move right here. Go ahead and try to drive the stake. Fourth and one, you can put somebody on somebody. 46 yards rushing for Brom. That's a career high. Anthony Allen, the tailback, as 
the first down, spins back by that yellow line, and then gets ahead of it again. Danny Land Santa made the tackle. First and ten, Louisville. Here in the third quarter. Bobby Petrino. As usual, his name has come up with all these coaching vacancies, including some prominent jobs currently open at Alabama, among others. He said, I am not a candidate for any job. And of course, when you have a 10 year contract worth a total of about 25 million, that'll get you comfortable where you are. In addition to the fact he has a terrific team coming back again next year and just about everything you need to be successful here at Louisville. You're Rudy of the intended receiver. There is Butler had the coverage flags down in the secondary. One of the things you're going to see is the Big East coaches. They get a great reputation. They already lost a good one in Mark D'Antonio, who Holding ended up at Michigan State. Number 28 on the defense. 10 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. Here's Chris Fowler. Thanks, Sean. Defensive struggle over in the ACC as Georgia Tech's Reggie Ball will throw a pick here. Aaron Curry, the Deacons linebacker, makes his first pick of the season. They drive down, but the normally reliable Sam Swank with the shanked field goal, still three zip midway second quarter, and Jacks, guys. Great story in the ACC. Anybody would have expected to see those two teams in the championship game. First down. Anthony Allen stopped right at the line of scrimmage, the 14. Ray Blagman right there, defensive tackle. Anytime you can get penetration and you slow a big running back's feet down, it takes a little bit longer for them to get going again right there. Anthony Allen literally stopped before he got going again and the pursuit was able to close the deal. Look at look at the big fella right there. Somebody sewed something in the middle of that jersey. The big man. Third quarter has been the big quarter this year for Louisville. 105 to 22 in the third quarter. Brom out of the shotgun. Colby Smith the running back in the ball game. The Brahms left. James one almost intercepted. Should have been at the two yard line. That's the first poor decision right there by Brian Brom as Brian Hennigan came in and had a shot to make a play, but Brian was staring down the receiver. Look at his eyes now. He's not looking around. He's got his eyes on one particular target, one particular throw. Three of them around the playmaker in Douglas. Brian's just staring him down. It's not going to happen, Brian. Give a look away. Tenth play of the drive, four wide receivers, three to the left of Brom. Colby Smith the back again. Brom, short dump off. And very close to the first down goes Jimmy Riley. Senior from Youngstown, Ohio, just his eighth catch of the year. Three of those last week in their win at Pittsburgh. It looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down and less than a yard again. And again, Coach Petrino and his staff have tremendous confidence in this offense and the running ability of short yardage for Anthony Allen. It's a play action pass and it's a touchdown. Brock Bolin. Again, when you have the ability to pound the football and you're successful, this is what's going to happen. But I'm going to tell you, you see that big guard pulling out right there? He's not going to pull if they're going to run the ball that way. As a defender, you have to see a pulling guard running away from the run action. you got to tell yourself, something's up. Harmony's extra point up and good. Brock Bolden, just his third catch of the year, good for his second touchdown reception. 34 to 10, Cardinals. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Mercedes Benz, located on the web at MBUSA.com. And the City Premier Pass credit card, rewarding, very, very, very rewarding. 
Well, it's pretty rewarding as well if you're the first one across the finish line at Churchill Downs, the Kentucky Derby, first Saturday in May. They tell us annually about 100,000 mint juleps are poured during the Derby, and if it's a year Bill Raftery's there, it's about 150,000. <laughs> With the kiss. And a very nice tip, I'm sure, for whoever brings the mint julep to him. Mint juleps. Donald Brown tiptoeing through the tulips to the 40-yard line, a gain of about eight. He's had a very nice day. Randy Etzel thinks they're on the way back up. This has been a momentary downturn. Brown, a reason why. They also have a, a quarterback, Dennis Brown, who is redshirting this year. They were tempted to take the redshirt off him when the injuries mounted, particularly to D.J. Hernandez. But Randy said, we've made that mistake in the past, didn't want to make it again. Donald Brown for the ball carrier, and Terrence Butler took him down. Back up line, back of getting some action. I tell you, Donald Brown, to me, Sean, if they can recruit players like Donald, then they will be on their way back. Interesting note about D.J. Hernandez's brother. I spoke with recruiting expert at ESPN today, Tom Luganville. Hernandez's younger brother is the number two rated tight end in the country. Committed to Connecticut, then decommitted and verbal to Florida now, but don't expect Connecticut to give up the fight on him. Big Brother's got to come in and put the law down on him. Yeah. What's that all about? Third down and four, flag down and before the snap. Well, it's remarkable the success they've had moving from Division One AA, the division formerly known as One AA. Prior to the snap, false start, number 55 on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. And really having the season they had two years ago, they were probably a little ahead of where they should have been as an infant in, yeah. in 1A. There's the record. I mean, they jumped right in their first year. Out of one double A into one A, six and six, nine and three, eight and four. They beat Toledo handily in the Motor City Bowl. And then the losing seasons, these last two. But that first group of uh, seniors, those 50 year seniors who were departing into the day, they played in Memorial Stadium on the campus, 16,000 seat stadium. The football offices were in trailers, basically. The coaches were in mobile homes <laughs> trying to conduct their business. And as you said, Chris, now they have a beautiful $50 million yeah. football complex. Similar to what Jim Levitt went through down in South Florida. That was unbelievable. Yeah. And I mean, that, it's just about patience. And the, and the fans of UConn and the students be patient. Randy Etzel will get it going. You've got to give this program time to build, especially with those new facilities that can attract those type of recruits like Donald Brown. Yeah, the Sarah's to punt. I remember one time talking with Jim Levitt in his office, the old USF coach, when he was in the trailers. He goes in here, bang, bang. So what's that? So it's the baseball team taking practice. We back up to the outfield fence. Those are balls going over the fence and hitting our office. 39-yard punt, no return. This game is being broadcast in high definition on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma Displays. Sean McDonough, Chris Bielman, Aaron Andrews at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Louisville with a win. For at least a share of the Big East Conference title. George tripling the ball carrier. The Cardinals look to add to their 34 to 10 lead here in the latter stages of the third quarter. Lindsey Witten made the tackle. Of course, Louisville would go to the BCS Bowl out of the Big East Conference should they win this game and Rutgers lose tonight at West Virginia, where they've never won. Rutgers is 0-14 all time in Morgantown. Yeah. It'd be a certain challenge to go in there, and I think the fans of West Virginia will be ready for that one. Yes. Yes, they will. They won't be playing for the BCS bid unless this turns around. West Virginia won't have a shot at it, but they're certainly angling for bowl position, a high ranking at the end of the year. George Tripling tackled by Dan Davis, not the ESPN radio tanker. Dr. Pepper Championship Saturday concludes on ABC at 8 Eastern time tonight with number 19, Nebraska takes on Oklahoma. Isn't it great to see that rivalry mean something important again? It's the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. 
College football lives here. I talked to a coaching friend of mine in Nebraska today, and uh, they're going to take it right to, right to Oklahoma. That'd be an interesting. You don't game. have this many friends. Yes. Believe it or not, I do. I buy a lot of them. <laughs> Brom. I think he believes he's more than a step <laughs> on the fours here as he goes out to the 47-yard line. Dante Moore credited with the stop. I, but again, anytime that you can be effective, you don't have to be the Michael Vick or the Stefan LaFleur's uh, of college football. But if you can be effective, that, that's going to create opportunities and problems for defenses that scout this team and scout Brian Brom in the future. His ability to move around just enough to make positive yards. He's got close to what, 40, 45 yards. We're we'll talking about everything that's at stake on this championship Saturday, and in particular in this game for Louisville. Rippling the ball carry, bounces off a couple of hits, goes to the 41 of Connecticut, a first down, Lindsey Witten, the tackle. Bobby Petrino, it's been reported, might have as much as $400,000 at stake today. He has bonuses in his contract if they get into a BCS bowl game, if they win a Big East championship, if they have a top five ranking. I guess when you give them a 10-year deal worth about $25 million, the average of about $2.5 million, if my Syracuse math doesn't fail me, Chris, Shouldn't you expect some of those things? I mean, that kind of money, you better be winning some yeah. conference championships and going to some yeah. and he, CS Bowl games. He does it, and he's been answering it. Off the hands of Yerudi and intercepted. Ernest Cole. Well, it's not Ernest Cole. It's Danny Lansana with the ball. And a flag down as he goes down. Flags everywhere. That's a couple times today where we see... And a hat went flying, too. Yeah. Mario Yerudia where the ball is bounced out of his hands. Normally a sure-handed receiver. And there's another. Yeah, the hat. But Mario, it, little stiff hands. He's got to relax those hands a little bit. And the ball did deflect high. But that's about the third or fourth drop that Mario's had today on characteristic. You see first interception in the last 110 pass attempts. Certainly not the fault of number 12 who delivered penalties. the strike. During the play, personal foul, face mask. Number 85, after the play was over, personal foul. Number 58, the ball be placed at the spot of the dead ball, first down. Well, there were three flags and a hat on the field. One of the flags and the hat has been picked up. It's a lot of laundry. This is see Mario right there, comes back for the ball, but fails to secure it and snag it with his hands. And a good hustle play. Valenciana just running, keep running, almost broke it out here. Oh. Saw Douglas with the, with the grip of the, of the head here. They, they called it, yeah, Sean, they called the penalty on number 58, but 58 for UConn. Presnell's an offensive tackle. Yeah, they misidentified a couple of people with the penalties today. Donald Brown, the ball carrier. Abe Brown made the tackle. Jeff Brown, the quarterback coach, older brother, Brian, about 16 years different. So a couple of ESPN telecasts earlier this year, some very animated conversations, not really conversations, monologues coming from Jeff Brown, who's noticeably calmer. A couple of the coaches we spoke with on the Louisville staff yesterday said so they thought that whole episode got blown out of proportion. Jeff Brown is actually one of the mellower coaches on their staff. Didn't look like it earlier in the year. That pass is intercepted right back by John Russell. Talk about Bonislawski being smart right there. He's got to be smart. Just go ahead and, and get another third down situation as opposed to giving the ball away on second down. Right there, he's trying to get it over the top to, Bra to Brad Kanyu. But John Russell doesn't give up on the play. He's playing two defenders, two offensive guys, Steve Browse and Kanyu. Senior exception of the year for John Russell, sophomore from Alexander City, Alabama. Rom 
comes out with a swing pass off the hands of George Stripling and incomplete. Here's Chris Fowler. Sean, thanks. It's the Taco Bell City update. Wake Forest offense does have a pulse in the ACC championship game because they've used Kenneth Moore at tailback in a direct snap. Used a lot of plays like this down the field. Had a penalty tacked on there. Swank with a field goal. Pair of threes after a soggy first half in Jacksonville. Yes. It's kind of the next evolution of the spread offense. Made popular by Houston Nutt in Arkansas with Darren McFadden with her tailbacks are starting to take direct snaps going back to the single wing pretty soon everybody will have a, a nickname like horseshoe and the ghost and all that kind of good stuff here stripling on the loose and down to the 31 yard line tackled by danny lansana 20 yard gain for stripling mentioned the running back by committee eight ball carries in the game last week against pittsburgh and Paul Petrino told us that Stripling is the fastest of the group. Sophomore from Jacksonville. They're playing that ACC championship game right in his hometown. Whichever team wins that ACC championship game, it'll be their first trip ever to a BCS Bowl. It's amazing the number of players on the Louisville roster from Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. About 80% of their defense is from those three states. They recruit speed. They recruit great athletes. Here's another. Colby Smith down to the 25 yard line. Ryan Hennigan made the tackle, a six yard gain. You can say enough about Colby Smith, though, Sean. A senior getting an opportunity to fill in for Michael Bush and really taking advantage of the opportunity and maybe providing himself a shot to play at the next level. It's the end of the third quarter. The University of Louisville Cardinals 15 minutes away from a Big East title on their home field. Our college football coverage on ESPN presented by Cars.com. Fourth quarter. Louisville with the ball at a 34 to 10 lead. Second down. Four at the Connecticut 25. Here's Anthony Allen. Inside the five-yard line. A senior from Tampa. Tackled by Dante Moore, a junior from Tampa. First and goal, Louisville, a gain of 20. You can see the big tackle, Kirk Quarterman, right there. Pull and kick out and clearing house for Big Anthony, who wants to get six more on his senior day in Papa John Stadium. What's well, about the gist of it today? Up to 493 yards of total offense with almost a full quarter to go. That's above their season average. Allen spins down to the three, tackled by Ryan Hennigan. Louisville's averaging over 468 yards per game. Second in the uh, NCAA behind Hawaii, which just marches up and down the field every time they have the ball. Yeah, but just a. a very versatile offense and a lot of different looks three wides two backs three tights like you see right here it's a lot of different formations they executed perfectly Anthony Allen touchdown we talked about how Hawaii goes up and down the field we spoke with Paul Petrino the offensive coordinator yesterday he said we expect to score as an offense every time we're on the field and there are a lot of games it seems like they do that and that's the kind of talent that they have and you'll see right here why because low men win and they're able to change the line of scrimmage and Anthony Allen is not going to be denied on his last game as a Cardinal in the home stadium good for you Anthony good for you the extra point 51 yard drive just six plays in two and a half minutes and Allen captain 41 to 10 Louisville Louisville leads Connecticut 41 to 10 the celebration has begun on the Cardinal sideline the reality that in 13 minutes and 54 seconds of game action they're going to be at least Big East co-champs title all by themselves should Rutgers lose tonight at West Virginia which is a possibility certainly 
The Knights are the underdog. Art Carmody's kickoff out of bounds. By the kicking team, ball be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. There'll be a lot of interested parties in that game, the Rutgers-West Virginia game in these parts tonight, Aaron. That's right, Sean. Brian Brom telling me yesterday, I've never cheered for West Virginia before in my life, so he's going to be a Mountaineer fan for the very first time since he expects to get together with some of the guys and check out that game. But the defense, the Moby Okoye guys, the senior says, yeah, some people will probably be over to watch it, but I can't watch it because I don't want to jinx my guys, and every time I watch it, the wrong team wins. <laughs> Says he doesn't have much luck when he watches the game. The team he wants to win generally loses. So he said, I'll probably have people at my house. They'll be watching it. They'll tell me what's going on, but I'm not going to watch it. Brown hit immediately by Nate Harris. Senior from Miami in his last game in this stadium. Team leading tackler entering today's action tied with William Gay for that honor. He had 11 tackles at Pittsburgh in their big win last week. That's a good read by Nate Harrison shoots the gap and talking to some NFL executive. He actually has draftable numbers 6 1 2 35 Sean he's a 4 5 guy 40 and anytime you get a linebacker to run 4 5 teams will definitely take a look at you. I'm glad I'm not paying your phone bill. We're talking to these talent people and NFL people and college coaches. Amobi Okoye doesn't want to watch tonight, but everybody's had their eyes on him all day today. He's been at the center of it time and time again. Donald Brown dropped for another loss back to the 29-yard line. You know, and right here is the good feet and the ability to burst to get a running back down on the ground especially one like Donald Brown he doesn't get frozen he's able to get his bent knee position and burst and not get stuck with his knees bent very good athlete for his size and again his weight loss has helped him tremendously this year six yards and losses Connecticut has gone under 200 yards now total offense Terry Colley came in a running back just a couple now Malik Jackson another big play specialist he came as a safety at the University of Louisville, bulked up and became a very good linebacker. And Connecticut will putt with under 12 minutes to go. That's what Mike Cassidy, his philosophy, he likes to recruit those safeties like a lot of schools for speed and let them grow into linebackers. Now the Sarah's got the punt off, Trent Guy. In is the knuckleball at the 30, retreated for five yards, and made it back to the 34, four-yard return of a 39-yard punt. Moby Okoye didn't know much about football when he came to this country at age 12, shared the moment, senior day with his family on the field before the game today. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com. Find the right car for you. Cars.com. And in part by Singular, raising the bar. Brian Brom, part of the Cardinal March into the stadium. He's our Cooper Tires player of the game. Fifth game this season of 300 yards passing or more. Followed up his four touchdown performance of last week with three this week. Tenth career game of 300 yards or more passing. And still another season left. Barring a big surprise. Grew up in this area in a Louisville family dreaming about taking this program to places it had never been. They had national championship hopes this year. That's not going to happen, but they have a very good chance it seems of going to a BCS ball game and that's somewhere they've never been. Pass interference flags coming as Brom through the deep ball. One thing we know about Louisville they will not they're gonna stop. Go, they're going to play. Yeah, yeah they can score again and oh, score they, again and score again. They will. On the defense, 10 yard penalty for the line of scrimmage. First down. You know that they're trying to and Connecticut's trying to match up man to man and they can't handle the size or speed of Urudia. You see Butler will get a hook right here. But see the size and the speed and when if you're playing man to man coverage from Darius Butler do not look back at the quarterback especially the angle of the route that Urudia ran and then you know I, I can't say I disagree with Louisville's philosophy Sean. It's your job to stop. 
They're going to play. They're going to do what they do. Rom. Ooh, turned into a hit in the back at the 49-yard line. And that's what you get. If you're going to play, if yep. Rom's going to run, then you expect a good hit by Hennigan like he did right there. The problem was is that Brian kind of went down a little late. He's got to see that big linebacker have the radar locked. He's got to go down early, force that guy to go over top of him. He took a good shot. He is a tough kid. He is a tough kid. Smith through a big hole. First down Louisville to the 35-yard line. Ryan Hennigan made the tackle. 16 yards on the run for Smith. And they're over 500 for the game. And that's nothing new. It's the 24th time in 48 games for Bobby Petrino as head coach that they have been over 500 yards. And just to, uh, again, I go back to it, but it's so important because so many teams strive for it. Is the balance through the air and on the ground that Louisville is able to accomplish the yardage that they do each game? Flags. I don't know if they got the snap off. Fire to the snap. Delay game. Number 12 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. And ever the perfectionist, Coach Petrino upset. Here's Chris Fowler. Sean, Army, Navy, you never know. Cadets three touchdown underdogs today, but they stop Navy on fourth down. Then the old double reverse. Walter Hill hands it to Jeremy Trimble, and the junior takes it 41 yards, three and eight, leading eight and three, seven nothing midway first quarter in Philadelphia. Four meetings of that rivalry in dominant fashion. Foldy Smith, the ball carrier. Navy hasn't won five in a row against Army since the late 50s and early 60s. Wade Harden was the coach back in the days of Roger Staubach. Well, uh, to me, uh, that's one of my sports fantasies that I want to do is go to an Army Navy game one day, go to Fenway Park where you hang out once in a while one day when they're playing the Yankees. I had the chance to do the Army Navy game four or five times, and it is one of the great spectacles in all of sport. A little screen dumped off to Barnage, the tight end. Look at him run into the end zone. Touchdown, Louisville. He had the first guy to give him a high five right there is Colby Smith. Barnage should give him a high five because Colby threw the block downfield to spring the big fella. Well, they're thinking about the orange ball as the oranges start to come down out of the field. They need records to lose tonight before that's going to happen, however. Right there, Kobe Smith threw the block on Delliston to spring. Barnage for six. Nice. Teammates helping teammates. So they don't have enough big play wide receivers. They also have a big play tight end. 32 yards to Barnage. Extra point up and good. Fourth touchdown pass of the day for Brian Brom. 48-10, Louisville. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, Aaron Andrews, our producer Bart Fox, our director Bruce Detroit, our terrific ESPN crew. Delighted to have you with us. Louisville trying to finish the regular season at 11-1. They've never had an 11-win regular season. They have won 11 games in a season, including a bowl win, on two occasions, in 2001 and in 2004. Mark Zaccone kicked off. And Andre Dixon brought it back to the 31-yard line, a 21-yard return. Yeah, Art Carmody was uh, kicked a couple out of bounds right there, and I was keeping an eye on Coach Bobby Petrino. And as you said, Sean, ever the perfectionist, he jumped all over the kicker, and he gave another guy an opportunity to go ahead and boot it off. Terry Colley will be the tailback now. 
senior playing in his last game. Terrific career by far their all time leading rusher with over 3,100 career rushing yards. He's tackled by Abe Brown. It's part of championship weekend. More great action. 430 Eastern on ABC. USC trying to punch its ticket in the BCS championship game in all likelihood as they take on their rival UCLA. And then tonight, 745 ESPN and ESPN HD. Number 13 Rutgers. A win. They'll share the Big East Conference championship with Louisville, but earn the automatic bid into the BCS. They own the tiebreaker with Louisville as they won the head-to-head -head matchup in New Jersey. Brandon Young, the intended receiver, incomplete pass. Now Louisville up there to very healthy number six. Of course, there are, Chris, four at-large berths yeah. into the BCS bowl games, but the consensus seems to be it's going to be Michigan, Boise State, Notre Dame and LSU that get those. Well, and I look at that, Sean. I think, you know, Louisville in the Big East, maybe this year they were underappreciated, but I don't think that's going to happen again because when, when I watch this year, it is good football all the way around. Movement on the left end of the offensive line. They're going to end up sixth, Prior fifth or snap, sixth. Ball start, number 55 on the offense, five yard penalty, remains third down in the BCS and end up playing in a very good game, the Sun Bowl. Nobody disputes the Sun Bowl and how good yeah, it but is. It's not the BCS. But it's not the BCS, and they're the and they're they have the sixth ranking in the BCS. They're yet they're gonna be shut Dame. out of the BCS. They're better than Notre Dame. But Notre Dame's Notre Dame. Yeah. A huge national following, the TV ratings, the ability to sell tickets. Slosky throws off the hands of Brad Kanyu. That'll be fourth down and another punt for Connecticut. Congratulations to Boise State. Undefeated as they head for the Fiesta Bowl. It'll be interesting to see what shakes out in the uh, Rose Bowl. Most people believe Michigan, assuming USC wins tonight, that uh, Michigan will go to the Rose Bowl. LSU, some speculation right? yeah. about LSU, some Notre Dame. I don't think you'll see a Michigan Notre Dame rematch. I hope not, because Michigan stopped them pretty good on the Irish's home field. What a booming punt by Pavaceris, and it's going to stop dead inside the two yard line. He had a 78 yarder earlier. This one's 65. A little stat pad on your way out of the season. Here's Chris Fowler. Okay, Sean, thank you. College basketball is coming up next. Eric Rabio and Gonzaga. Tangling with Texas down there in Phoenix. If you're in the state of Texas or the state of Washington, we'll get you out there before tip off of that game. The rest of you will join it after Louisville finishes off Connecticut. I hope my colleagues, Bill Rafty and Jay Billis, are enjoying, I'm sure, the balmy conditions out there <laughs> in the desert for basketball today. Hunter Campbell, a broken play as he takes over for Brom. And he does well to get out of the end zone. So a great day for Brian Brom, 341 yards and four touchdown passes, one interception on a ball that should have been caught. Outstanding, and I, I think you want to point out, you should point out that Hunter Cantwell, when he filled in for Brian Brom, outstanding, 44 for 69, 692 yards, five touchdowns and two picks. He held the fourth down pretty good, Sean. Well, yeah, saw considerable job. action last year too. And Brown had the knee injury. He is a capable backup with starting a lot of teams around the country. Sophomore from Paducah, Kentucky. Sergio Spencer, the ball carrier. Danny Lansana made the tackle. Coach Bobby Petrino starting to get some of his younger guys in and hopefully some of the seniors that have paid their dues so to speak and don't get to play much we'll get an opportunity to play I just saw number 88 for Louisville Dale Goldsby run in a former walk on right here and I saw him walk out on the field with a lot of pride this did get out of the end zone Sergio Spencer again driven back by Bray Flagman the senior Defensive tackle playing in his last game for Connecticut. He's been playing well today. He's gets penetration. You can't move the big fella, 325 pounds. Disengages blockers well. Played the smackdown. 
First putt of the day for Louisville. Corey Getchy has to be careful there in the back of the end zone. Robert McLean waiting at the Louisville 41 yard line for the punt. McLean caught it at the 43. Dances to the 35. Here's Chris. Sean, thank you. Another reminder, if you're tuning in to watch College Hoops, you will see Kevin Durant and the Longhorns take on Gonzaga down there in Phoenix at the Hall of Fame Challenge. Coming up next, if you're in Washington or Texas, you'll get the game very soon. Sean, back to you. All right, Chris, if you haven't seen Durant play, it is worth watching. He is a tremendous talent. Saw so your uh, alma mater is going to welcome Greg Oden back tonight, perhaps. Yeah, that's a surprise. They've kept that on the QT quite well, I might add. He wasn't expected to be back. Possibly they were talking about when they go down to Florida. Terry Colley. Gang tackle to the line of scrimmage. Here's Aaron Andrews. Well, guys, we haven't had a chance to see UConn's freshman backup punter Desi Cullen today. There he is on the sidelines. But this is just too good of a story. We got to get it in for you. How about this? Grew up in Louisville, loved the Cardinals. Was even part of history there back in September 26, 2002, when Louisville upset Louisville. Let upset Florida State here. He was right there on the goalpost. He even says he has a piece of it still with him. The Cardinals didn't make uh, offer him a scholarship, so he went to UConn, but still has a piece of that goalpost. I just love the fact, let's get back to the Greg Oden thing. I got a jab spiels. He's getting all these phone calls yesterday, but doesn't get one from Thad Mata giving us that big tip about Greg Oden. Here's Collie again. And second down, the hard earned two. Well, let's go back and look at Desi Cullen. He he claims that he and his brother were the first on the goalpost, and you have to think based on his position, he might have been. Now, of course, it's very dangerous and idiotic to be on the goalpost in the first place. So hopefully, now that he's at a fine academic <laughs> institution like Connecticut, he's smarter. But he uh, was a huge Louisville fan growing up. As Aaron says, wasn't offered a scholarship by the Cardinals. He sent around a recruiting tape, and the first four or five plays were not punts they were hits him covering punts he said I am the Kentucky hammer <laughs> and the way he runs down to make tackles after he punts <laughs> Terry Cauley the ball carrier and put a little Terry Cauley right there put a little Yukon hammer on somebody on Rod Council that's again that's a statement about Randy Etzel and his staff, when you see a guy like Colley come in and just run hard and not give up and keep fighting till the end. By the way, Aaron, I did talk to Coach Mata. He said, keep it on the QT, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Colley's going to play in the Gridiron Classic, formerly in Las Vegas. This year it's going to be played in Jackson, Mississippi. Incomplete pass intended for Terrence Jeffers. Monoslowski's career will end today. So much these seniors at UConn have been through. They've played good groundwork, and this will be back-to-back -back losing season. And now the heat will be increased on Randy Etzel. There's already some, not a lot, fan and media pressure. Well, there should be. I mean, you're a bowl, bowl division team. Yes. <laughs> the artist formerly known as Division 1A. Here's Colley trying to add another touchdown to his resume. Oh, out of bounds at the six inch position. I hate the old thing, six inch line. There's no line here. No, no. Six inch spot. Yeah, well, you just had one, so we'll put the yellow line there for you. But watch watch Thomas with the lead block, and you'll see Colley right here stretching. Oh, give well, him the come, touchdown. You can maybe throw the flag, Randy. Yeah, throw Randy, the flag. get him get, another get touchdown. He's had a great there. career, battled through all kinds of injuries. Or they could always stop yeah, it from above. should review that. Or give it to Cauley again. He's still in there. They do. There you go. And he scores. Justice. Good for you. Anytime you see guys again getting beat pretty badly for them to come out and keep fighting till the end. Right there, the school record. So Donald Brown will threaten those before it's all over. 
Terrific career in playing with injuries, lots of knee problems in recent years. The last few weeks, he's been playing with a broken bone in his left hand. Team cap, freshman All-American in 2002. And he led the nation in rushing. For rushing yards by a freshman. Tony Cherovino adds the extra point. And the Husky faithful who have made the trip with reason to cheer. You know who used to coach at UConn as an assistant? Our friend and colleague, Lou Holtz. Yeah. And he still apparently tells the banquet joke. So <laughs> when he went to the University of Connecticut, it was in store. And then they added another one, and it became <laughs> Stores, Connecticut. It is a very small town. Oh, well, I have yet to have the pleasure of visiting there, but it's a nice so place. Hopefully, I'll get up there to do a game one day. I just, I'm excited to see the. You have a lot of goals. I, well, you want to get to Fenway Park. You want to go to the Army Navy game. You want to get to Stores, Connecticut. Well, I've accomplished one working with you this year. That was certainly oh, at the top of my list. You're so kind. <laughs> well, we have a couple bowl games left. Yeah. Still to come. But I do, I, I, I love going to see, like, I went, I did a game down at Cincinnati this year, and I got to see their new facility and what they're trying to build and how important football is becoming. And I know that Coach Etzel on the phone the other day was talking about the facilities up at UConn. And they're, they're making an investment in football. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's important. And he, he, you have to do that, Sean, if, if you want to go ahead and compete. Matt Newsy will kick off. Well, it comes down to Trent Guy. And he ran into a guy at the 22. Here's Chris. Two and a half to go. In the fourth quarter, Louisville leading 48-17, about to finish the regular season. At 11-1, Hunter Cantwell comes back out to play quarterback. First 11-win regular season in school history. They'll have a chance for a record-setting 12th win in the bowl game. If Rutgers wins tonight, that bowl game is likely to be the Sun Bowl against Oregon State. If Rutgers loses, Louisville be the BCS representative out of the Big East, then likely heading to the Orange Bowl to meet the winner of the ACC championship game underway right now between Wake Forest and Georgia Tech. And we talked to Paul Petrino, the offensive coordinator, brother of Bobby Petrino, yesterday in our coaches' meeting. And really, this offense has only had one bad half of football, and that was obviously the second half against Rutgers. And you think back on it now that they've been so consistent that just one bad half really cost them a chance at controlling their own destiny as Rutgers is in control of their own destiny when they go to Morgantown tonight. And likely cost them a chance to play for a national title. Yeah. And you could sense they've done a nice job bouncing back from that. The wins over obviously a good South Florida team and at Pittsburgh and now a win today. But as we talked to the coaches and players yesterday, you could sense there's still the lingering disappointment over that be. loss because yeah. they can have a great season. It's just not as great as it might have been. But that's a good thing that there's a sense of lingering disappointment, in my opinion, because that's the standard that Bobby Petrino and his staff and the players and fans are trying to build down here. And, and we should mention Tom Jurich, too, the athletic director, has just done an incredible job with the facilities and the hiring of coaches and building this program yeah. into something special. Howard Schnellenberger, yeah. when he came here in the mid-'80s, said we're on a collision course with the national championship. The only variable is time. A lot of people laughed at him back then. It was a losing program with bad facilities, very little interest in the area. It was pass complete to Corey Thompson, a sophomore with his third catch. Well, they're certainly on a collision course with a chance to be in the conversation with great regularity year in and year out with this talent, these facilities, and the improvements they continue to make. Louisville will finish its Big East schedule at 6-1 and one in conference, guaranteed to share the title with Rutgers. If Rutgers beats West Virginia and Morgantown tonight, Rutgers will go to the BCS Bowl game. Louisville likely to the Sun Bowl. Congratulations to Bobby Petrino. 11-1 and one in the regular season. He and the Cardinals and Randy Edsel and the Huskies conclude a disappointing campaign at 4-8, and 1-6 and six in the Big East Conference. Will Michael Bush be back next year as the Iowa run at the national championship? They'd be one of the preseason favorites should he return. 
Final score, Louisville 48, Connecticut 17. 570 yards of offense today for the University of Louisville Cardinals. Now for Chris Spielman, Aaron Andrews, and our entire crew, Sean McDonough remind you to stay tuned for basketball coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Louisville Big East champions. They've won 18 in a row on their home field here at Papa John. Now Dave O'Brien, Jay Billis, and Bill Raftery in Phoenix. Thursday. Well, the next night, the Fox crew flies a marquee jet to Miami for the FedEx Orange Bowl. And on January 2nd, it'll be an ACC Big East clash. Wake Forest won its first conference crown in 36 years. They'll have to slow down the second-ranked offense in the country, the Louisville Cardinals. For the second time in three years, the Cardinals won 11 games. This year, they earned a Big East crown and their first trip to the BCS. After 13 straight losing seasons in the ACC, the Demon Deacons celebrate a BCS berth and their first 11-win season. No team is shine brighter. No team has good color. I think you can run the state on a beat. And if Boise State is the feel-good story of the season, what about Wake Forest and Jim Grobe? A terrific job. Picked last in the preseason in the ACC. They won the title because they were so tough. Lost their quarterback, their starting tailback, and won it by winning five games decided by eight points or less, including the championship game against Georgia Tech. A terrific job all the way around. And Bobby Petrino has built a great program there at Louisville, spearheaded by that great offense. I mean, you're talking about watching like a, a video game out there, Barry. You're right, Chris. Bobby Petrino is one of the great offensive minds in college football. And the thing that impresses me, he loses his top two offensive players. He, he loses Michael Bush, and the, the great running back, the first week of the season. He loses Brian Braun for a couple weeks during the year. And you know what? They don't miss a beat on offense. But the thing that people don't understand, they're impressive defensively. They're better than what people think defense, defensively. They will come after you. Yeah, this should be a, a lot of fun, obviously, in Miami. And, and if you're looking for some controversy, forget about the BCS. How about back in 1970 when Wake last won an ACC championship, guys? They weren't even invited to a bowl game. And there were only 11 bowl games then, but how do you win a conference title and not get invited? Things have changed a little, oh, eh, boys? Oh, haven't yeah. they? So obviously this is the biggest bowl for them since Very the 1946 much. Gator Bowl. Charles still has his receipt from that game, <laughs> by the way. So we still have three more.